Hi, I'm Rebecca Bustamante, proud Filipina. And with my husband, we started our own business called Shellery Associates. After that, we started Asia CEO events to recognize the outstanding leaders in our country and in the region. This show is an extension of that, where you can learn from great minds at minsan, kwintuhan lang tayo. Welcome to the Titans! So when you, be, when you decided to be an architect, what do you want to be? I wanted to be an architect, not just for the Philippines, but elsewhere in the world. And wow. I was able to do that, uh, having been invited to do projects in 40 countries. Mm -hmm. So the first country you mentioned, you are in Dubai. In Dubai. I was named hard. I was invited to work in Dubai as an architect and senior urban planner. So I reported wow. to work when I was 27 years old. Then I worked there full time for four years, helping in the architecture of urban planning of Dubai, creating our garden city out of desert, making Dubai as a model city in the world, and planning Dubai as if there's no oil, and making it the pace setter city in the Middle East. And one thing I liked very much was for every year of service, we were giving one month the, the opportunity to go around the world and get inspiration from the best cities in the world, mm -hmm. from the best architecture in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to Dubai and you see your very first building, how it feels to you? Yeah, it's so much, so uplifting and humbling. Because most of our recommendations, architecturally and urban planning wise, they follow them and they keep improving on them. Mm -hmm. And also because uh, uh, I was the first Filipino Southeast Asian architect uh, mm -hmm. there, and my family was the first Filipino family in Dubai. Uh, my second daughter, Karima, was the first Filipino born in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And then it was in Dubai that the Taipans and Tycoons of the Philippines met me. Like Henry C. and the late Enrique Sobel heard about my work you in Dubai. You in Dubai? In Dubai, not from here. Henry C. came to my house and the uh, executives from Ayala, they, they saw my work in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So they, they told the late Enrique Sobel that there's a Filipino architect urban planner helping Dubai. Mm -hmm. So both gentlemen, Henry C. and the late Enrique Sobel, they invited me to come home. They promised to give me employment or architectural and planning projects. Mm -hmm. So I worked for Henry C. as a full-time consultant. Then later on at Ayala Corporation, mm -hmm. then Ayala Land as mm -hmm. a architect urban planner. Mm -hmm. Did you ever enjoy coming back? Having gone to, I think, 79 countries and territories, mm -hmm. the Philippines is so blessed by God, uh, especially natural resources, mm -hmm. uh, human resources, and mm -hmm. so on. There are so many things about our country that sometimes we don't appreciate. Mm -hmm. Like, we're number one in the world in marine biodiversity. We're now number one in sailors, seamen. We're now number one in call centers. We're number two in the world in geothermal energy. We're number two in the world in BPOs. We have the third longest coastline and in the world, even longer than mainland USA. And some countries, they go to war because they don't have waterfront. Or Dubai only had 70 kilometers of natural waterfront, so they created the man-made uh, Palm mm -hmm, Islands. Mm -hmm. We're number four in the world in gold and number four now in shipbuilding. We're number five in all mineral resources and number 12 in human resources. And the Filipino expatriate is the preferred employee of mm -hmm. employers in the world. Mm -hmm. Kings, mm -hmm. uh, sheikhs, mm -hmm. rulers, hospitals, developers, mm -hmm. and uh, cruise ship, and so mm -hmm. on. And the Philippines is uh, 400 times the size of Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, 350 times the size of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, eight times the size of Taiwan, mm -hmm. and three times the size of South Korea. Mm -hmm. So we should be in the top 20 economies of the world. If mm -hmm. you only know how to plan and address the challenges of corruption, mm -hmm. criminality, and climate mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. we should be in the top 20 economies of the world. Mm -hmm. So to me, when I was president of the Management Association of the Philippines in 2011, the theme was uh, creating a culture of integrity, mm -hmm. addressing corruption, criminality, and climate mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. and it seems to be being addressed now. Mm -hmm. We won about through competition and bidding, about seven government projects, mm -hmm. zero corruption. Mm -hmm. We've been competing and bidding, and uh, it's now a uh, level playing field, and we've been winning. When you mentioned that you've been traveling and you see these big, beautiful buildings, what building that you wanted 
to build in the Philippines? Uh, I think even the tall buildings, there should be a human scale. Okay. Look at the uh, Rockwell Center. We did the master plan of the whole 15 and a half hectares mm -hmm. and the architecture of the first five towers are uh, Rizal, Luna, Amor Solo East, Amor Solo West, and Hidalgo to set the standard. Mm -hmm. And many other projects, like I was involved in the planning of Cebu Business Park, uh, Ayala Labang, Ayala Heights, uh, Seven Schumarts, uh, Five Robinsons, and I think those are large scale projects. But we do also projects for the poor, mm -hmm. for the environment, and for the church. Did you ever dream this kind of lifestyle, um, architect? It was a goal. I, I really wanted to go international. Mm -hmm. As I, I also tell my our my colleagues at Palafox, every time we we design, if we do a good job, think of the beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. We have core values, mm -hmm. not just for professionalism, mm -hmm. but also the environment, spirituality, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. Palafox, we have seven scholars at the Asian Institute of Management. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, also in-house professional development. Mm -hmm. He's been very generous with sharing his um, knowledge and also um, mentoring us on business as well. But more than the knowledge and skills, it's really um, giving us the, the wisdom also um, to pursue um, and to uphold the values of the company, like honesty, integrity, and professionalism. Of course, we expect to be the best or to give our clients the excellence, professional excellence. I'm sure, architect, you've gone through so many challenges. So what's the biggest challenges you, you overcome? The challenges because part of our advocacy is for the environment and also anti-corruption. Fighting corruption is a corporal works of mercy mm -hmm. because the worst sufferers of corruption are the mm -hmm. poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. So fighting corruption is helping the poorest of the poor mm -hmm. and I think you can get graces for doing that. Mm -hmm. It's very risky but yeah. it's also helping our nation building. How about working with your, your team? Like I know it, it's not easy also. What's the principle that you, you guys follow? Yeah, uh, we, have, we, we look at the best practices in the world. So we learn lessons from them. Mm -hmm. And we try to, like for architecture and urban planning, master planning, we do at least three alternative designs, three alternative master plans. Together with the client, we choose which will be the best fit to the site. Mm -hmm. And we just, we think we plan beyond the client paying mm -hmm. us. We also look at who will benefit from mm -hmm. a shopping mall, mm -hmm. from a tall building, mm -hmm. from a house. Mm -hmm. Not just the client paying us, but mm -hmm. the beneficiaries mm -hmm. of our building. Mm -hmm. Like, um, if you look in your business, um, your business architect, no? you're very successful. How about your family life? Yeah, I try to balance it. At least every Sunday we have a family meal. Mm -hmm. and, and we go out of our children and my wife. Mm -hmm. I travel with my wife, Filma. Mm -hmm. But when they were young, were you very active by racing them? Yeah, we used to play golf together, okay. travel together. Mm -hmm. So, and despite my busy schedule, I make time for the family. Mm -hmm. So, how you budget your time being work, family, husband, friends? <laughs> <laughs> of course, family first, mm -hmm. then my career, and of course the the church also. We, we're very active in church. Mm -hmm. I'm a lay minister for Holy Communion, and will my wife is a lector. Mm. Yeah. Until now, you're still active in the church? Yeah, until now. We're very active in church. I've been to Harvard several times. I was a guest lecturer before I became a student. How did that yeah. happen? Yeah, because the students were asking intelligent questions, so I enrolled myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I took up advanced management in real estate management and uh, special courses like architecture and sustainable development, mm -hmm. master planning, sustainable development. Uh, the best uh, designs in shopping malls, uh, mm. tall buildings, and so on. So what's your best message then for students right now to, to be successful like you? For students, they should really work and study very hard. And architecture is not, it's a very challenging profession. Okay. It's not an eight to five job. Sometimes okay. you have sleepless nights to, to beat deadlines. And clients have very, very high expectations. So architecture, urban planning is a uh, continuous learning. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could share our uh, core values at Palafox. Professionalism, honesty and integrity, uh, caring for the environment, uh, speed, agility, mm -hmm. versatility, and mm -hmm. so on, and spirituality. Mm -hmm. 
even the score values, I think it has helped me because of mm -hmm. my uh, education in the seminary. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're doing uh, designing hospitals, schools, tall buildings, large-scale developments, mixed-use developments, place to live, work, shop, and dine, learn, and worship with healthcare and wellness centers. So it's a 24-hour cycle activity centers, and and there's so much uh, psychological income mm -hmm. doing these projects. Mm -hmm. And we are an interdisciplinary team mm -hmm. of architects, urban planners, master planners, mm -hmm. interior designers, and mm -hmm. engineers. Mm -hmm. So it's really project teams, mm -hmm. not just architects, not just urban planners. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also on the government side, we finished the uh, Clark Urban Master Plan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pampanga Megalopolis, mm -hmm, the urban mm -hmm. planning of the whole province of Pampanga. Mm -hmm. We're finishing Metro Davao, mm -hmm. and we finished Puerto Princesa. We're currently doing El Nido, mm -hmm. Siargao Tourism Master Plan. Mm -hmm. and, and some more, especially these elections, the incoming governors, congressmen, and mayors have been calling us for an appointment. Wow. And hopefully, we'll be able to help them in their urban planning, their architecture, and so wow. on. Wow. So you think that tourism in Philippines will really grow? Yeah. The tourism is growing very fast, but we should have to support it with infrastructure, mm -hmm. like uh, access roads, uh, airports, mm -hmm. seaports, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was a team leader for the World Bank funded Metro Manila Transport Land Use Development Project. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I was 25, 26 years old. And I was architect, senior planner, and head of development planning. Mm -hmm. And in, the, in that Metro Plan Manila, we already predicted that with the do nothing scenario, mm -hmm. we'll have catastrophic traffic, catastrophic flooding, mm -hmm. lack of decent housing, problem with garbage, mm -hmm. not prepared for disasters. Mm -hmm. We knew that more than 40 years ago, and mm -hmm. it was our planning report. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Ma World Bank funded Metro Plan Manila. That's how I was discovered by Dubai on mm -hmm. that project. The projects we did in Dubai, they implemented it. But mm -hmm. here, they were not implemented. That's why we have all this catastrophic traffic, flooding, and not prepared for disasters. I've been to more than 1,000 cities. Uh, we've done projects in 40 countries. I visited 79 countries and territories. and. Uh, the ingredients of success is uh, uh, strong political will, visionary li leadership, leaders of vision, yeah, yeah. good appreciation of urban planning, yeah. uh, good appreciation of good design like architecture, engineering, mm -hmm. and good governance. Mm -hmm. Be it the rulers of Dubai, mm -hmm. the rulers of the, the leaders of Singapore, mm -hmm. and most progressive cities in the in the mm -hmm. in the world, progressive cities and countries. Mm -hmm. And I think we're starting to have it now, the strong political will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's more appreciation now of good urban planning. Mm -hmm. If you can see also um, the, you mentioned about PPP, the International Airport, can you yeah. on that? For the NAIA, we did a master plan for the redevelopment of NAIA in 2004 mm -hmm. to increase its capacity uh, because we knew that uh, in capacity from 2004 for the next 15 years mm -hmm. while waiting for Clark mm -hmm. to mature. Yes. Unfortunately, our plans were not implemented. It's mm -hmm. only now that it's being yeah. uh, implemented for upgrading of NAIA mm -hmm. and Clark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it's delayed, like circumference road number six being mm -hmm. done now, was mm -hmm. proposed by the American Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. in 1945. Okay. It's only being done now. Then I have proposed 10 circumferential roads around Metro Manila, interconnecting the uh, Calabarzon and Central Luzon, mm -hmm. and also connecting Cavite and Bataan. Mm -hmm. I think it's being studied now, especially the, the bridge or tunnel between Cavite and Bataan. So that coming from Cavite, if you want to go to Subic, you don't have to mess around with the traffic congestion mm -hmm. of Metro Manila anymore. And the boat? Yeah, it will be connected yeah, by a bridge. I, th yeah. I think 20 years ago, I proposed that. Oh my God. And now it's happening. It's happening. Then the light rail transit in the Metro Plan Manila, we were supposed to have completed the eight lines by 1992. Mm -hmm. And 1984, we had one of the best light rail transits in the world. Yeah. But it was not implemented uh, mm -hmm. uh, according to the phasing plan. Mm -hmm. The subway was first uh, proposed by the Japanese in 1971. Oh. It's only now line one is being done. So we are so delayed in implementing the urban planning and infrastructure projects. So the build, build, build now is trying to catch up. Mm -hmm.
you think it happened the next three years during the yeah, administration? This next three years is very critical. So I, I think we should help uh, uh, bring our country into help in nation building with infrastructure uh, and and so on. Uh, and and we try to help as much as practicable and if we are requested. Beautiful. Mm. <laughs>